Do you want to go first, Craig? Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Craig Miller. I worked as the folklorist for the state of Utah for many years. My name is Carol Edison, and I was the folk arts coordinator from 1978 till we retired in 2011. We were looking for an opportunity to help share traditional artists in Salt Lake City with the general public. And um, in 1986, we had that opportunity. I was approached by the uh, Wyoming Folk Arts Program to produce a festival in Green River. It was a really wonderful experience to see what a great representation of the community that festival was. And I immediately thought, you know, this is something that Salt Lake should be taking on, Salt Lake should be doing. I approached Carol Edison of the Folk Arts Program. We knew what the festival needed to be, and we knew that Casey could put it on. Everybody who was there was invited. It was specifically curated to be exactly what it was. Everything we did was all educational. In a lot of ways, I think that was probably our most successful festival because there were so many obstacles, and we made it happen. We partnered with the City Arts Council, the State Arts Council Folk Arts Program, and it was a dream that's lasted for 35 years. As a city, we treat the arts as a public service. Other things cities do are trash and sewer and water and parks and recreation. And the fact that arts is part of that is, is most what I enjoy about the job and getting to really see the arts as an essential public service. I think the festival represents a incredible snapshot of who our neighbors are. To have community members feel a sense of belonging is really important. Salt Lake City in Utah has been um, oh, very friendly to refugee and immigrant resettlement for many, many years. And you think about how important it is to learn different ways of doing things, different ways of approaching problems, different ways of seeing the world, and how important it is to have those connections as a community. So that sense of building identity and place and, and giving people the opportunity to learn and engage with, with different communities, I think is really important. When people think of tradition, they think of something past and out of date. And living traditions gave the meaning that it's still alive. Is it rarely is it about a single artist. It's usually about a family and a community. And so the reach is so deep. I get really excited in a future iteration of living traditions of seeing how these traditions evolve with younger generations. We have so many festivals, but the best one, guess what? It's the traditional living. Because when you don't know where you come from, it's hard to get where you're going. Exchanging foods, recipes, and folk arts ties directly to our ancestors. And the part that I feel like is what we're doing is using a gigantic ribbon and tie the past to the present and pass it on to the future. Not only the performance and the hearts and the love that we want to portray that, hey, we're part of this community, we are productive citizens of this wonderful community. It is so diverse and we're uniting together. The point is that we will understand each other, that something isn't as foreign and we realize that we talk about the same joys and miseries and, and everything, no matter what language it is. We are truly thankful for this opportunity that, that the Living Traditions Festival has given us, uh, not just for us, but also for the broader Salt Lake community to bring all these cultures and arts to the valley and, and expose people of Salt Lake to these vibrant cultures. This festival is really about the people that are demonstrating, performing, singing, making food. It's really about that, and that celebration is just, I think it's everything. <laughs>